and welcome to the next episode of The Morning Brew, with me, your host, Lee Petcher. Be advised that this podcast deals with issues of the passing of a loved one and the dealing with grief. So if these issues are upsetting to you at the moment, please come back to us when you feel ready to do so. Remember, you are not on your own. Otherwise, pour yourself a brew, get comfy, and we'll begin. Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of The Morning Brew, with me, your host, Lee Petcher. At the top of every episode, I take this time to ask all my listeners, how are you doing? Seriously, just how are you doing today, this week, this year? I know it's only February, but it seems like it's been a hard year already. I know the vaccinations are going out. My fiance Emma, who was on a couple of podcasts ago, she's had her vaccination now, but there's still a lot of suffering and unnecessary hurt in the world at the moment. So if you're not okay, that's perfectly fine. You're not alone. If you feel like you need to reach out and speak to someone, do it. Don't suffer in silence. If you don't feel that you can listen to this episode today, that's absolutely fine. Stop it now. Come back to it at a later date. But again, take this time just to evaluate how you're doing. So I'm sat here at my desk with my brand new cup. It's a morning brew cup bought for me by my fiance. So we are branching out into merch, so it seems. But thank you, Emma, for this wonderful cup. As I continue to do this podcast, I've had a few people come up to me recently and out of the kindness of their own heart, and I know they're only concerned about me, but they've been asking me, how has this podcast affected me? And I've got to keep an eye on that. And what I say to these people is, yes, at the end of recording the podcasts, depending on the subject matter, I do get upset. I do cry. I do feel down for a little bit. That's absolutely fine. It's not that I take that with me. If anything, I find it very cathartic and slightly therapeutic. I can't afford therapy at the moment, but talking things out just helps. And no, I'm not living here. I'm not in this grief bubble all the time. I'm here for an hour whilst I'm recording and then maybe a few hours later when I'm editing, but it's a different kind then because I'm more focused on the edit than actually the content that's being said but it's absolutely fine. And I'm discovering new things and I'm learning new things. In fact, that's something that both Johnny and Emma have said after having been on this podcast, they've gone away and said, it's weird. Just, I didn't realize that until just speaking about it now. And even afterwards, they've come up to me and said, "It's, it's so nice just to talk about it. Because not often do we get chance to just talk about anything without fear of judgment, just being open and honest and just letting it all hang loose. And that is the purpose of this podcast. So yes, it's very therapeutic and cathartic for me and the guests that I have on to speak about these issues. But I want it to spark a conversation with you as well. I want you guys to go away and have these kind of conversations in your own lives. And again, don't live in that moment. Don't make that the whole reason of being or that your whole week. Just make it a practice. Doesn't have to be daily, doesn't even have to be weekly. But if there's something that you want to know, now's the time to talk. Because when they are gone, it's too late. So anyway, this week is another special week. I have another fantastic guest on. Now, I'm not going to lie. I wanted this person on when I first got the idea of doing this podcast. But I was also very trepidatious and worried about how this conversation might go. Because you see, conversations with this guest can go usually one of two ways. I could end up annoying him. He could end up annoying me. We both snap at each other. But I guess that's what siblings do, right? Now, there's a past about this guest that I had no idea about, which is the reason I wanted to ask him on. So this week's guest is my brother, again from another mother, but this time we do share the same father. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joseph Russell Petcher. Russ Petcher, welcome to the Morning Brew. How are you? 
I'm very well, thanks. I've uh, just done the school drop and I've had made two cups of coffee and the day's still young. So is that your morning brew of choice, a cup of coffee? Yeah, I prefer coffee over tea, I've got to admit. <sighs> I thought we were brothers. I don't understand how you can like coffee over tea. That's us all over, isn't it? I like it coffee, is. you like tea? We are like chalk and cheese. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so recently I've had my fiance Emma on the podcast. I've had my best mate Johnny on the podcast. And these were people that I've always wanted on. And uh, especially like Johnny to go through his kind of, he's been there with me through it all. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The other person I really, really wanted on was you. Oh, thank you. When I set it up, I was like, I really want to speak to Russell about this because we've gone through our dad's and my mum's loss. We've gone through grandma and granddad's loss together. Mm -hmm. Even though we've gone through it, I don't think we've actually talked that much about it. Right. We bring it up. We talk about like the, the outskirts of it all and how are we doing and how we're feeling and how we're moving on. But I don't think I've ever asked you how it's affected you. I don't think you've ever asked me how it's truly affected me. And, and the one thing that I've never spoken to you about is the loss of your mum. Mm-hmm. Because for listeners who might just be tuning into this episode, a few episodes back, I did describe how our dad had you with your mum and then had me with my mum. And there's like an overlay there, like th- there was an affair going on. Mm-hmm. And I remember moving into the the house and I knew that your mum had passed. I don't think I ever put two and two together until later on in my life, at which point I figured, you know, it's best just to keep that quiet and let bygones be bygones and just just carry on kind of the status quo with the relationship as, as things are going on. But we'll, we'll get into that a, a bit later on. Is there anything to start off with that you want to talk about yeah i think the, the strangest part of it all for me was the sort of like speed that things took place so obviously my mum passed on christmas day and then it wasn't long after that you were introduced into the family but the thing that really annoyed me is that there were no one sat me down and explained what were what if you know what i mean it's like okay uh, i knew your mum anyway so you knew my mum yeah my dad had taken me to see your mum on many occasions before you were born. Wow, I didn't know that. And I had to come home and lie to my mum. Wow. Did you not know that? No, 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 I didn't. I remember being in that flat in Clayton. And again, it's really, really early childhood memories because you said your mum died when you was 12. That means I was two. Yeah. So I don't know the science behind when memory starts and you know when you get cognitive memories and things like that. I remember the, the flat that I was living in with my mum. And I knew Barry came to see us. I knew Alan came to see us. For those who are listening, Barry and Alan are also stepbrothers of mine and Russell to a different wife. And I knew Beverly, again, our sister, came to visit us. I don't remember you coming. You may have done, but I didn't know that you'd met my mum A, before I was born. Yeah. And B, you had to keep that a secret from your mum. That's right. It's amazing what the power of a, a bit of pop and crisps can do for a young lad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult one as well. Do you know what I mean? Uh, when people say, would you like best, your mum or your dad? You know, I always said my dad. Is that because you had more time with dad? No, not at all. In fact, I, I think I had very little time. I, I, I was sort of like torn between the both uh, because, you know, they kept leaving each other as well and I'd get dragged off to stay with some relatives and keep it secret and... It, there were a lot of that that went on uh, throughout a lot of my early childhood. Right. But yeah, yeah. I used to take me to your mum's house. I remember she uh, were a big fan of the Smurfs. She had Smurfs everywhere. Kind of <laughs> like, uh, you know, she had cats later on everywhere. Yeah. It was kind of Smurfs, Smurfs back then. <laughs> she had a big poster on the wall. It was strange. It, it must have been in the spare bedroom. It were a, a big tiger and it were like an SO poster. Do you remember this? So like, I think it's petrol or diesel SO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had this poster on the wall, which I always found a bit bizarre. When did you first meet my mum then? I can't really remember to tell the truth. Like, they were, were a long time ago, but I just remember being taken somewhere and staying over and, and, and then, you know, coming home again in the morning. And Did you know at that point that 
dad and my mum were having an affair or I don't think I really knew much at all really at that age you kind of do see things differently don't you it's like well I don't know what this is but you know they're letting me have pop and crisps and you know watch what I want on TV <laughs> so <laughs> them little things are pretty good at that age and when did you meet me uh, see, that's a tricky one. I, I could say, uh, when I met your mum, she lived in Hipperome. That would be for you. And when I met you, we were at a place in Clayton. I can't remember an, an, an initial meeting, but then, like I say, once my mum passed and you and your mum came to stay with us, I don't know, I just thought, mm, why haven't anyone sat me down and gone through this with me, rather than just sort of like, right, there's some new people, I'm off to Bob <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit rushed and a bit weird. When you did meet me, was I introduced to you as, this is your baby brother? I don't think so, no. I, don't, I can't remember exactly. I, I think it was just a, a case of, this is Lee, go out and play with him. <laughs> <laughs> my mum used to tell me stories that when we did live together when I moved in, you used to go up and ask my mum if you could borrow me to take me around town. Oh, yeah. Because uh, women liked guys with, <laughs> with little brothers. <laughs> yeah, don't try that at home. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. <laughs> and I know exactly what tale you're going to say as well. You're going to say about when we went to the cinema. I, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the stomach. If you want to say it, you say it. <laughs> we were after to see one film, but when we found out the girls in front were seeing another, we soon changed the mind. Well, I changed <laughs> your mind. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Can you remember the film? Wasn't it South Park? I'm tempted to say Runaway Bride. I'm not sure. It could have been Runaway Bride. It's obviously a film I'd never go to see by choice, is it? No. I mean, it's thanks to you that I got into film. Ah. I know I've spoken about this to you in, in length before, and I've spoken about it on the podcast before. Because of the circumstances of your mum's death, dad took you under his wing quite a lot, and everything was then compared to you. And I looked up to you so much as a kid. I just wanted to be you. You used to bring home these beautiful girls from school and you were dating a lot and you were popular you could play the guitar you did karate and dad just sang your praises so everything that you recommended to me I was like yep I'm going to be just like Russell so when you took me to movies when you introduced me to indie films like Clerks and The Breakfast Club and and things like that you got me excited about all that kind of life and that Christmas when we were sat around at the, the Christmas dinner and dad used to tell tales of you playing bottom in the, the school play. Every year, dad would say that story. Every year. And I was like, when I get to upper school and I can be in a school play, maybe then you'll start talking about me. And it's, it's thanks to you that I'm an actor today. Thank you. I don't really know what to say, uh, Like you say, we both see things differently. It's just nice that you think he, he did speak to me in, in such high regards. And I'm sure he did, but... It kind of annoyed me as well, if you know what I mean. Okay. I didn't like him going to the pub and telling people about how I did karate. Do you know what I mean? It, it seemed like, I don't know, I, I just didn't like it. I thought it was all about him and, you know, what he can tell his friends. Right. They weren't there so like, to see how much I hated it as well. I don't know. It's a strange one. No, that's really interesting because, like you say, you, you do see it from two different sides. From my point of view, you could do no wrong for that. And I would have killed for any of that kind of praise to be lavished on me. And I was always, well, Russell did this, well, Russell did that, well, Russell did this. Nothing I could do would ever compare to you. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How was it for you on your end? See, I I didn't like him coming to things. If I ever had something big and important, or that were big and important to me, for instance, like I was playing a, a gig at a particular venue or whatever, I'd hate him coming because it were an embarrassment because he'd turn up half cup it criticised me afterwards. And I, I just preferred it when he wasn't there. But there again, I liked him being there as well because I knew we were lucky enough to have a video camera. <laughs> you know, back in them days, you know, that's the only way you did capture a performance where if you knew someone with a camcorder that could video it. So And he captured everything. It were awful because on the one hand, I wanted him there because I knew I'd be able to capture this memory somehow. Mm. But on the other, you know, you, you're an embarrassment. And a lot of the videos that he has done, you can hear him speaking all the top and <laughs> they're bad as well. It's, you know. <laughs> we had this conversation when I told Dad that I was going to be an actor. No, I didn't. I didn't tell Dad I was going to be an actor. It wasn't until he passed that I became a professional actor. It was when I got the job in the bank and he turned around to me and said, I'm so proud of you for having a steady job. 
And yet that grated on me yeah. because he was so proud of you for going off and touring and being in the, the world's second best Nirvana tribute band and, and this, that, and the other. And I was like, well, why couldn't you want that for me as well? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Did dad ever compare me to you? Yeah. Uh, when he was me, he'd speak a lot about you. And I think this is the thing, you know, that's interesting talking now is we've both kind of got the so like, same talk given to us about the other one. Wow. But, you know, he, he did, yeah. You know, why can't he be like Lee? Why can't, you know, look at Lee. He's got this, he's got that. Oh, look, Lee's passed his driving test. Why don't you pass your driving test? And like, you, you might see him as sort of like, you know, not as rock and roll things that we were happy about, but maybe that's because he wanted you to have, you know, stability. Yeah. Whereas, you know, for many years, you'll notice that I, I was signing on. It were awful. And I remember I was very tearful, you know, because I, I couldn't afford things. And, and that was because I didn't have any steadiness or stability. So in a way, it was kind of like he was playing us off each other. Maybe so. I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have said that, no. I just think he, he looked at us both differently, if that makes sense. Yeah. Do you think that comes down from the mistakes maybe he made in the past with Michelle, Beverly, Billy, Alan and Barry? I think now, and then this has only just come to me, but it does actually kind of make sense. Every 10 years difference does actually make a, a difference, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like I parent very different now to what I did with Miles. Mm. Maybe just the older you are, the kind of more mellow you become. I don't know. I could be wrong. So just for the listeners there who don't know, uh, Russell has two children of his own. He has Miles and he has a daughter, Daisy. So you're just talking about Miles there. Mm -hmm. So let's go back then. No one sat you down and said, this is what's happening. When did I move in with you? Can you remember that? Yeah, of course I can remember. March 26th on my 13th birthday. You came to the party. Yeah. You stayed over at our house and you never went home again. Wow. Yeah. Well, how was that for you? To tell the truth, it wasn't too bad. Uh, <laughs> I were having a party. It wasn't as if you'd come and took over the party. Or, oh, it was like you just like in a small corner with your mum. And I think you said that's the first time you met grandma and granddad. Yeah. I think you said that on the previous show. Yeah, I did, yeah. But yeah, it, it was actually my 13th birthday. There were a lot of people there as well. My dad invited all the karate people as well. And, you know, there were all my school friends and stuff. So yeah, and, th and then like say we went home and, and, and that were it. That's where it all started. And it would just would have been nice to sort of like, I don't know, have some kind of opinion on it or, you know, whether we're happy with that or not. But so I never noticed, I'd say is, is the correct word there, I never noticed you going through anything about the loss of your mum. I guess in my head it was like years ago and, you know, you'd kind of dealt with it and moved on because you never brought it up with me or in front of me. But knowing that it was the 25th of December and then, mm -hmm. what, three months later I'm in the house, how did you deal with the passing of your mum? I don't know. A, a lot of it's hard to remember. I do remember it happening because I accidentally thought that said she died when she hadn't died. They were telling me she was going to die that night, I think. So obviously I got the wrong end of the stick. So I was quite tearful then. But then when she did die, I didn't feel I could so like, do all that again because I'd done it when I thought they told me she died, if, if mm. you get my gist. Yeah. But it was bad because, let's like, say, I had to stay at my friends the night that she died, which was obviously for Christmas. I remember waking up on Christmas morning, which was a happy time for my friend, because obviously it was the same age as me, opening presents and stuff. And then my dad coming down the drive to pick me up, to send me home, to sort of tell me what had happened. And like I said, we were funeral. I, I remember very little to tell it to. Maybe you coming along might have been a distraction from it. Yeah. I don't know. It's something I've never really thought until now, I suppose. Have you ever grieved and do you have times of like missing? I mean, obviously you have times of missing her, but again, it's nothing that you've ever confided in me with. So I'm interested. No, as awful as it sounds, I don't really think of it as though major, you know, because it was that long ago. Like I say, we're a bit of a strange mishmash of a family situation anyway. As far as you could tell at that point, dad and, and your mum, Marilyn, were still together. Or had they broken up? No, they found out they got can uh, that my mum had got cancer and they got married very quickly. In fact, there's some photos at the wedding. It were all a rush job at reception. Really? I'm not entirely sure when that was, but I think that were only a few months before. Wow. Because I think that's why they did it as well, because they knew she had cancer. Okay. From everything that I could gather, again, in your own head, you, you put it a certain way, but it felt like they'd been married for a, a very, very long time. No, no, not at all. So it's, it's interesting to hear that it was quite quick. 
Yeah. Because my dad had your mum's name tattooed on his arm. Yeah, yeah. He'd had that tattoo a long time. I think, you know, the, right. didn't rush out and have a tattoo because she were, <laughs> you know, got cancer. <laughs> but like <you>. guys do. <laughs> <laughs> so when your mum passed, so I was told, your mum's ashes were buried, slashed, scattered in the back garden of the house that we were living in. Oh, yeah. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> I mean, how does that make you feel? I don't know. Some kids would find it a bit freaky, wouldn't they, living in an house knowing that your mum's ashes are in the back garden. <laughs> it's like... My mum was not happy because when my dad got drunk and got nostalgic and, and reminiscent, he would go to the back garden and, and cry. Yeah. Yeah, we were a bit freaky. My bedroom over facing the back garden. <laughs> you know, there were, there were a time in my life where I were a little bit, ooh, this is a bit freaky. I mean, it all seems bizarre. Why I was laughing earlier is because uh, I went down to try and get the ashes a few times when I've been drunk in the past. <laughs> and what it is, is one of my work colleagues now lives in the exact same house that we grew up in. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I've asked if I can go and get my mom's ashes and you know, have them properly. And she says, no, it's all concreted over. It's all done, which is sad in itself as well, I suppose. Well, yeah. I mean, one of the things that gets me every every now and again is that we don't have a headstone for dad and for my mum. Does that affect you with your mum? Because there's no place for you to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I do prefer graves to sort of like ashes. I'd like say, yeah, it'd be nice if for a grave I could go to, but they're in. There's not a lot I can do about that. Like I say, I, I have a serious lack of photographs, uh, a lack of like, materialistic things as well. But it kind of doesn't bother me. No, right, okay. Because uh, you, you offered to give me some, didn't you? And I, I wasn't really particularly bothered. I don't know. Some, some people like that and some people don't, I suppose. What about for Miles and, and Daisy's sake? Would you not like photos and stuff to remember them by so you can just go like, this was your grandma before Peter? And this is your actual grandma. I think I'd, I'd just wait until they bring it to table a bit on that one. Yeah, I'm not going to force it upon them. It's like, hey, look at this. Do you know that is? Do you know what it is? Uh, I'll just wait till they're old enough just to like want to know for themselves. I mean, Miles is older now. How old is he? 20? 24. He's at an age now where I'd lost my dad mm -hmm. and you'd lost your mum. Mm. And he's, he's older than that. So does he know about your mum? In order for him to, to bring it up and ask? Yeah, I, th I think, uh, yeah. So you, you've spoken to him about your mum? Yeah, because, because Miles' mum, who I'm not with anymore, obviously she, she had cancer as well. So we spoke a lot while that was going on. So we, we kind of had some similarities there, I suppose. Right. So I keep coming back to this. Your, your mum died Christmas. I mean, of all the fucking times, Christmas. I know. Do you have... Any hang-ups over Christmas? Does it, like, spark nostalgia and things like that in you? Yeah, I'm not going to like this, but I actually... It sounds awful as well, but I love telling the tale to people <laughs> just because it, it makes them so sad. And But then t the way I'm telling it, you know what I mean? It's, how can you, you know, say it like that? You know, it's awful. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, I'll, I'll play it at work. You know, I need to have Christmas Day off work. My mum died on Christmas Day. I can't face being in that. <laughs> and, you know, I, I am actually laughing with it. And no, I, I don't have any rituals. I don't have any, let's do this or let's do that or let, let's just get on with it. It's never really been that big of an issue for me. And as, as daft as it sounds, and like I say, I know it sounds awful, but it's just the way it is. And I think because of that, I try and make Christmas better, if you know what I mean. I, I pull yeah. out all the stops myself because it's like, just because I've had a naff Christmas doesn't mean you know, everyone else should. I have had a few Christmases on my own, but I've done that to myself. Yeah. And and that was just a whole feeling, sorry for myself thing, and I, I purposely didn't see anyone and just let myself away. But I'm, I'm past that now. I'm like, got kids now. Christmas is all about kids. So let's just, you know, have a good one. I mean, it's so easy to go down that route of I've had a bad Christmas once I mean, a terrible Christmas. And then every Christmas after that kind of follows suit. So you're just self-perpetuating kind of thing. So I'm glad that you've got out of that now. And it's like, let's let's celebrate Christmas for, for what it is. Even though I've had a bad one, I'm going to make sure you never have a bad one. It's a weird one, isn't it? It's like Christmas, well, what's the difference between whether it was Christmas or, you know, middle of summer? The, the fact that it's happened is bad enough on its own. Just because it's happened on a particular day is like, what well, that's what makes it worse for that person. Oh my God, it died on Christmas Day. That's awful. I think it's because it's a day where everybody else is celebrating. Mm. I, I know what you mean. I, I, I can only like kind of compare it to how my mum died on, on New Year's Day. 
it's a day where everyone's off work and it's the new year and everyone's bringing it in and they're all happy and the countdown to midnight and everyone's joyous. And I'm like, well, you know, it's not, it's not that for me. So Christmas is like that, but I'd say 10 times the joy because like everyone, depending on your religion, celebrates Christmas and it's a time of giving and, and family yeah. as it is. So yeah, to lose your mum on Christmas can be a really, really hard thing. And I'm, it's nice to hear that when you say it hasn't affected you, it has affected you, but it's nice to hear that it, you don't let it consume you and that you've, you've taken that and you're, you're moving that forward and you're giving that fuel to, to make it better for, for everybody else. Exactly. Yeah. So I move in, mm-hmm. you're 12, no, you're 13, I'm three. And you now have a little brother that you kind of have to look after and babysit. And there's a whole set of responsibilities that come along with that. Your mum's died. It seems like your dad's moved on. How is our relationship encompassed in that? I mean, we've had ups and downs. We've, we've gone a ye- years without talking. We've gone years where we're living in each other's pockets. It's what brothers do. And I, I call you my brother. I don't call you my stepbrother. I've never called you my stepbrother. You're my brother. I don't know how, how you perceive that. I don't know if you say, oh, Lee's my stepbrother, Lee's my brother. But like, what's been our relationship? How have you dealt with this stranger coming in effectively? See, there again, we're talking about a long time ago. I'm probably guessing that if I were around that kind of age, I wouldn't have been around much anyway. I'd have been out just doing what teenagers do. Mm. And then obviously coming home again. Do you hold any resentments towards me? Or did you hold any resentment towards me? It's just you're saying that I, I got lumbered with babysitting a lot of that. Maybe I did, but I don't, I don't really recall that. I can't really see a reason why I'd have to. Because your mum and my dad weren't really big on going out together. You're saying this having to babysit you, but I, I can't really think of any examples where that would have been the case. It was more of a case of, oh, Russell, you're going out, take leave with you. But there wasn't any kind of animosity, any resentment towards dad's moved on. He's got a new kid and like jealous feelings or anything like that. Probably. Let's say I'm, I know I keep going back to this. It was such a long time ago. But yeah, I, w- I would imagine I'd have been pretty apt off. Not even just a long time ago, like up until Falcanda now. I reckon I probably were apt off, but I'm not now. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of any particular examples. It's like, because, you know, I think when I really started seeing a difference in me and you were when I moved out, which I, I didn't move out technically, did I? I kind of went to live with Miles' mum. Mm-hmm. But I also kind of didn't tell Petter and his dad that I'd kind of moved out. Yeah, I just wanted it to be as a, yeah, I'm just sleeping out a lot. <laughs> and then I remember your dad turning up at Miles' mum's house with all my stuff and says, right, you're living here now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, 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 I live, I live down there. And like, no, Lee's having your room now. Best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that will when boom everything it I'm like right this is it then I ain't got you know them to fall back on anymore in case this relationship don't work out you know I go down and visit I was quite lucky you know I still had a key you know it wasn't as if I had to knock on the door and wait for someone to answer or whatever you know I was still welcome there but yeah I'd go to my old room and now it would be your room <laughs> decorated completely different to the way that you decorated it <laughs> yeah yeah decorated completely different better <laughs> and I think I'm jealous because you, you've got a lot of stuff you know I mean if you know you, you were into a particular football team whatever you, you get the kit you seem to get a lot of stuff you know that you wanted mm. I think that I might have resented that at one point yeah that's totally understandable you know you had great CDs again Thanks to you. My taste in music came from from you, from wanting to be you. Well, yeah, I, I think there were a lot of jealousy towards the materialistic things more than jealousy towards you. Oh, fair enough. I always was under the impression that you hated me when I was a kid. My mum disliked you, but I think that's what <laughs> it's like in some families, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? You know, everything in a bed of roses, is it? No, no, not at all. It's hard to think of, you know, what, what did we do together? that we can both distinctively remember as a really good time. Do you ever remember me taking you to Biola Caves and things like that and going over to Adol and yep. just, just larking about? I remember you took me on a trip once. I can't remember where it was. My mum drove us there, dropped us off. There was a big, massive fishing lake. Yeah, that that love that love in the Biola Lake. Yep. And then we had to make a, our own way back. I remember that. Which one that far? Well, for me it was. I was only a kid. But it was spending time with you that I loved. It was, I remember one time being in your bedroom and we were playing top trumps with you and the girlfriend that you had at the time. And I was just being included. 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when Allied Colloids exploded and we had to go to the highest point in the house. Do you remember that? Yes. And that must have been scary for you. No, it was. That's the day that my respect for you went through the roof because you protected me. You took me under your wing. You you became the adult in that situation. You were like, Lee, up in the roof. We're going to do this. And you did everything you could to keep me calm. And because my mum worked at Allo College, I was even more frantic thinking like, what's happened to her? And you you really did look after me that day. I'll never forget that day. Do you know what? I've just thought now, I think I know why I resented you so much. Go on. We were never at the age where we could both go out and, you know, just go and have a drink somewhere. Mm. And do you remember, I used to wait and wait for you to kind of get to an age where, you know, that'd be possible. Mm. Like I said, you know, people end up going out earlier than what they should, you know, you can get fake IDs and stuff. Yeah. So we had kind of that difference in his age, which made it kind of awkward as well. Do you know what I mean? If, if we'd have been there to go and have a drink and talk things out or, you know, just go out for a night. But it's like you said earlier, 10 years is a long time. Yeah, the, the gap were there, but it narrowed. But by that point, obviously I'd moved out. I remember you talking about a nightclub in Bradford called Rio's mm. and you were there all the time. And when I was getting to the point where 15, 16, I wanted to go out and start partying and, and getting drunk, I tried to get in Rio's a few times. But I look young. I look young now. So when I was 16, I looked even younger. There was no chance of me getting in. And again, I, I kind of felt like I was letting you down because you did that. I was like, I'm, I'm never going to live up to our Russell's reputation or expectation here. No real rock. I think there were a time when we both went in, though. There must have been. Yeah, there was. Uh, it was a bit later on. I think I was, I was over the age. Mm. So... When I got to about 18, that's when the age difference between us seemed to to narrow. You played at my 18th birthday party and yeah, we kind of started doing stuff from there. Yeah, I, I used to come up to spend a lot of time with you when you'd sort of like moved out as well. Do you remember that? Yeah. We were quite a regular thing. We'd come up and have a drink and have a chat and talk and listen to music. We had a ritual every Sunday, I don't know if you remember this, where we used to go to the cinema. Yeah. We used to go to the showcase cinema and I... I loved those days. I'd spend my week looking forward to just spending time with my big bro. We're going to see whatever film's on. Couldn't even have to be anything good, but it's just, you know, some some quality time. Yeah, and traditions like that are good. I, I did a similar thing with Barry for a short time. Didn't have to be every week, but as long as you, you know, tried to stick to it as often as you could. And mm. like I say, it was good. I don't remember getting in way of that. You know, if I had money, I'd, I'd pay for you. If you had money, you'd pay for me. Yeah. It was that kind of vibe. Yeah, definitely. And you had a car, remember that's <laughs> that were a big part of it. <laughs> that that was that was the only reason why you asked me to go so I could drive you. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> so this is roughly now about the time you were 33, I'm 23, and dad passes. Right. Okay. And you said something around this time. And I knew you were joking, kind of, but I, I now say it. You were technically an orphan. Yeah. You're 33 uh-huh. and an orphan. So you relied a lot on my dad after your mum passed. Yeah. Because he was your, I know my mum took you in as her own and she did look after you and she, she you know, she classed you as a son, but genetically dad is your only guardian and parent now. Yeah. And he had a, a chat with me before he passed and he said, look, when Russell's mom died, I did kind of smother him a bit because I didn't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. And I, I can only imagine like that bond between you and dad must have been strong, even though he annoyed you. And I mean, that's, that's what parents do, right? But, you know, he, there was nothing he wouldn't have done for you that you needed. And I remember dad's death hitting you really, really hard. Do you want to talk to us about that? When he moved down to Mabel Farb, that were kind of... Uh, like point in time for me where I'd start thinking that, yeah, I'm not going to see as much of him as what I'm used to seeing. Yeah, he moved down Mabel Park, he'd come back up. It wasn't a regular thing. I had to try and, you know, get lifts down there so that I could see him. You you took me a few times uh, and then sometimes he'd come and pick me up. Yeah, it's, yeah, I never, I never even thought about that. I could just go at a drop of a hat with the, the car, but you needed to make provisions to get down there. So that, that kind of hit me hard. And then one thing that I've always done this wee young moment, and I did it with my dad as well, I try and visualise what's going to happen. When am I going to get that call? What feelings are going to go on? And it's wrong, and it doesn't really work, but it's something I just did. It's like, okay, it's going to happen one day. How's it all going to take place? How am I going to get a phone call? Uh, Someone's going to come knocking on my door. 
and then they're going to tell me and then what do I do from there? And you try and sort of like get an idea of how it's going to be. You, you think if you can kind of half get it in your mind what's going to happen, when it actually happens, it won't be that bad because you've kind of already sort of prepared for it. So it's like preparing for the worst. Yeah. You know, I prepare for situations that, you know, probably won't happen, but it doesn't mean you can't think about them and think, well, what would I do if this did happen or if, you know. And do you think that helped? Probably not, no, because you think, because you've prepared it in your mind. It's kind of like, you know, being in a play, you, you know exactly what's going to happen and where it's going to go. But it, it doesn't work like that at all, you know, and you one day I'm going to get a phone call off you. And I kind of, and I know we're skipping up a bit here, like when you did phone about your mum, I kind of knew what the call was before I'd even answered it. Yeah, you said that to me before. Mm. The thing that I do distinctively remember is I just dread of seeing you after your mum and dad. It was like awful. I thought, it's going to wait, mate. But I thought, I need to be there. You might not like me being there. Why? Why did you think that? I don't know. I just had it in my head that this wasn't going to play out right. I just thought, you're going to... I don't know if it's the right word or not, resent it, you know, uh, that it wasn't my actual mum and that it was your mum. I kind of felt that there might have been some of that going on. And we came down, didn't we? Me and Uncle Trevor and Annette Eiling, we met the outside pub. Yeah. And we were there. And they were like, oh, God, I thought he was going to punch me in the face. This is going to think I'm rubbing it in. I think there were a lot of that going on as well. And uh, that's just the first thing he said, I thought, oh, wow, it's going to be all right. It's, he just came up to me like, now I know how you felt. Mm. And I suppose you did. And I don't know why I didn't think that you wouldn't know how I felt, but it, it was just nice that, well, not nice, because obviously it's not nice, but no, no, we've both got this thing now that only us know, do you know what I mean, what it feels like for both parents. So it were, once you said that and you were cool with it all, I was like, yeah, it's all right, it's not going to punch me in first now. I did notice when you came down that you were being distant with me to start off with. Yeah, I, I don't know, I thought, how far up am I in the who, who we want to be around and who we don't want to be around sort of like category? Well, like I said earlier on in this podcast, you, you and my brother, and I know it wasn't your mum who passed, but you did spend an awful lot of time with my mum. And from what I've learned, you spent more time with my mum than I actually spent with my mum. I didn't realise that you'd met her before I was born. So of course it's going to affect you as well. And it was something that we were going to go through together it didn't cross my mind in any way, shape or form that it wasn't your mum or your stepmom even. And I wanted to be there for you just as much as you wanted to be there for me. Yeah, it's interesting hearing that. Because I often thought to myself, it's like, you know, especially when dad died, I was like, do I need to bother anymore? I don't have to bother if I don't want. Okay. Because that happens in life, doesn't it? Just some people, you know, you don't have to bother with them to from a still be, you know, family. Mm. Yeah, and, and we've both got sort of like people like that, haven't we, that we, you know, yep. we don't see and it's not a biggie. I thought, well, you know, I could just let this take its own cause and we'll lose contact now. You know what I mean? It's like... Was that with me or with my mum or with both of us or...? Probably with both because, like, at this point, remember, pet us down in, uh, is it Mabel Thorpe, yeah? Yeah. So, you know, that boat sailed now. You know, I don't really have to have all to do with her. You're off doing your own thing. It were a point. It was like, you know, I don't have to have all to do with these people now if I don't want. Mm. But I, I made a decision that I did want... Hence the, well, as you'll know yourself, the many letters that I write. Yeah. The phone calls that I make. I actually go down and see your, your mum. But I, I didn't have to do those things, but I, I did. So there's obviously more there than, I don't know, than, than what I expected, I suppose. I think my mum was worried that that's what you would do. Yeah, I think she was. She was like, I don't want Russell to think that that's it now. Mm. And that was never going to be a case for me. I was always going to let you do you. And I always made a point of telling you, look, I'm here if you need me. If you don't, then that's cool. But I hope you do. Whereas my mum was really worried that you would have left. And she loved receiving those letters and updates on Miles and Daisy and the, the things that you used to send. And she used to love the visits. And when she'd come over and she'd stop through at like Leeds Market and you went to go see her. Yeah, she loved stuff like that. See, that, that one were on my list. This thing was one of the last times I did see her. Yeah, she'd come up to Leeds Market uh, with some others from where she was. It must have been a, a day trip out to Leeds Market. And it was the day after I'd been to see a band and I was really hungover. And don't get me wrong, I can drink, I can deal with hangovers. But this particular day, I was in a bad way. And I was going to pull out and just say, look, sorry, I can't make it. 
But I was taking Daisy with me as well. I think this was the first time she met Daisy as well. And what made me go as well is because I knew the less you can see people, the more that might be the last time you see them, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And I think it was. I think that was the last time I saw. So if I hadn't have gone that day, you know, it's all right, we can kick yourself and teeth about stuff. But, and then people would say, yeah, it's not your fault. Like, How are you supposed to know? But I know, I'm glad I did go. No, no, I tell a lie. That wasn't the last time I saw her. Oh, no, no, she came to the house. But it was the second to last time. And it was a great day. Your mum was being really loud and bullshit and embarrassing. Because <laughs> <laughs> she went scooter and made a big point of, am I invisible because I'm in this scooter? Can nobody see me? Oh. <laughs> That's my mum. Never known embarrassment like it. <laughs> I'd like to say it was a trip and we're all fagging it every two seconds. And go, oh, no, I'm just staying here. You go inside. I'll just have a fag. Oh. You know, I thought, oh, God, this is awful. <laughs> yeah. And then she goes, oh, pick some up for Daisy. You know, you know, I want to get her some up. Oh, and it killed me when I got home. I saw this like little Chinese dress, you know, the, you know, traditional Chinese kind of dress. Yeah. Uh, I got to buy me that. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I never had guts to tell her it never fit either. Oh. Yeah, my mum, I've said this before again, that my mum used to buy just any old tat. I think you've got a, uh, a a chair that my mum bought for Daisy, haven't you? Uh, yeah, do some right crap on it, but you know <laughs> it's a thought that counts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How you express your love with like random, seamless letters, which I always look forward to in the post. They always make me laugh. My mum, and uh, do you know what? My mum loved them as well. When when she passed and we were cleaning out the house, there was bin bags full of those letters that she just kept. But yeah, the way that my mum showed love was just buying tap. Do you know though, she, she'd write back as well. Yeah. She used to write back, yeah. And uh, what, what she also used to do to make sure I continued writing letters, she'd send me stamps. I think she sent me about 30 stamps in one go. And I just thought, right, that's 30 letters I've got to write. <laughs> but it didn't bother me because I, I love writing anyway and she loved receiving them. It was a win-win. Yeah, no, it definitely was. So what about when my dad passed? I remember coming to your house that night. Yeah. And then I went to your house. And you went to my house. And we set off early the next morning. Yeah. And then that week, two weeks, were kind of... Oh, God. I, remember this one. I know I was busy doing things. I was busy telling people that dad had passed. I was busy sorting the funeral out with Johnny and Bev had come down and Barry was there. And me and Barry would stay up late watching stupid videos on, on YouTube and, and drinking. You were there. Mm. I don't know how I've blocked this out, but I don't really remember what you were doing at that point or how, how, how you were. Because like I felt all this pressure on me to, to sort stuff out. Like, what is it that you experienced during those times? Oh, God, I heard it. We are in Mablethorpe and it was a bad time for me because... I'd just lost my job maybe a few weeks before and I, I was skin. I didn't know what I was going to be doing next. I started signing on and I don't know, I just felt trapped in Mabel Farf. I thought, I don't want to be here. There's too much here. I, I need to get home. I, I need to get away from this place. And uh, it when Neil came to pick me up, they took me to his house in home. I stayed there a few nights and I was like... Wait, so Neil came down to Mabel Farf to pick you up? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, it, it was getting overly long. And if you remember, I was panicking about because I had to sign on and if I didn't sign on, I wouldn't get money. You know, obviously I was making things more of a me thing than what else. And he was like, well, I need to stay here. I think I, I managed to say, speak to Neil and say, look, can you get me? And I need to get home. And instead he took me to his house for a few nights in the hall and that was awful. I just wanted to get home. I'm not really good around people anyway in general. Do you know what I mean? If there's any more than two or three people in my house, I hate it. And, and, and it was just a very busy household and people come in. And yeah. I like, I like my, so like me time. Yeah, the aunties and uncles came and mm. yeah, it was really busy at that point. Do you know what I mean? And like I said, I didn't have a lot of money. You know, if I'd have drunk my way through it if I could have, but I didn't do that either. But just another thing, I know it's no to do with this, but when we're going about my dad, I remember when my dad's mum died, he uh, came to see me, come up from Mablethorpe and we've been to pub and stuff. Never mentioned it whatsoever. And then just as we were going back to Mablethorpe, we like, so like, wound window down, said so like, oh yeah, I uh, just want to tell you, uh, my mum died last night. Wow. So what a freaking odd thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like, being with me all that time and I knew there was someone not sitting well because he wasn't his usual self. Mm. They just told me like that. I thought, oh, what a bizarre thing, that one. Have I ever told you that story before? No, no, no. I've, I've never heard that before. 
I don't remember much about grandma's death, which is really weird. I remember granddad slightly. I remember that we were in a car and you had the choice to go in because it was an open casket before it went to the, the cremation and you had the chance to go in. I can't remember if he did. I don't think he did. But yeah, there was that whole conversation about what's an open casket and why why couldn't I go in? I wasn't allowed in. I remember that. I went to see granddad. It was bloody awful. And that's when I decided I'd never to see another dead body again, if I could help it. Yes. That's why I never saw dads. No, you did see dads. No, I didn't. You, you were in the room. Honestly, I swear. You were in the room at the hospital. Did you leave? I went to the hospital, but I didn't go into the room where the body was. I know, I remember you in, but they didn't pull the cover back to start off with. No, no, no. Honestly, seriously. They were in Boston, weren't it? Yes. Oh, like in the waiting area, whatever. Everyone went in and then they came out. No, honestly, seriously, I didn't. Wow. No, that's that's weird. I thought you were in the room. I know Bev was in it. No, no. I'm, I'm very against it. It's like, like I, I didn't see your mum's body. This is just not something that tickles my fancy, really. It's like That's fine as well. You don't need to see. I needed to see. I needed to see Dad's to make sure it was true, and I needed to see my mum's to make sure it was true, because I wasn't going to believe it otherwise. But I know yourself and other people that, that don't want to see the dead body. They want to remember them as they were alive, and that's totally fine as well. There's no right or wrong in any of this kind of situation. You've got to do what's right for you. Some people will go in and see the dead body, and then that's all they can think about, and they'll have nightmares, and they'll regret it. Some people won't see it and then they'll think, well, what if they're still alive? What if I just bump into them and it, it's all a ploy? So you, you've just got to do what's right for you at the end of the day. Yeah. So, yeah, this is interesting. Going on, on grandma's funeral and, and death, like, is there anything there that you can fill me in on? Because I, I don't remember. I vaguely remember. I remember your granddad's. That's kind of when I just started seeing Mel. Remember grandma died after she must have done, didn't she? Yeah. Grandma died a few years before dad. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that in great detail. I remember Weird, isn't it? my dad telling me. I remember not seeing the body. Oh, tell a lie. I do remember. That is when uh, we saw Billy, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, I remember it now. We had reception, well, not sorry, uh, work. Yeah, because I had a gig that night, I remember. So I had a gig in Eden with Cobain. So I had to watch my drink, yeah. which, you know, me, it's uh, <laughs> with it being a funeral as well. Yeah. I can imagine. Uh, that gig didn't go down so well. <laughs> but yeah, I do remember it. I remember Jolene, uh, my Uncle Billy's daughter, were walking in the room. I thought, what the hell? She's gorgeous there. Do you know what I'm on about? I don't know any of Billy's family. I, I wouldn't even know Billy if you pointed him out to me. I never met him. But yeah, that's when Dad went over to Billy yeah. and tried and shake his hand and Billy had nothing to do with him. Yeah, and uh, I had contact with Billy a little bit after that. Right. I think, you know, I mean, it's like there's two tales to a story, so yeah. we're in contact for a little bit. But now I'm more so, I think it's his son on Facebook, Gary Schofield. He seems to be quite an interesting character. He seems to like a lot of my stuff and we seem to have a lot in common. But it's one of them things. It's always just probably going to be a Facebook friendship and never go beyond that. Yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. Yeah, like I said, I've never, never met Billy. I wouldn't know him from anybody in, in the street. Yeah, we kind of took a bit of a, a detour there. Yeah. Dad's funeral. I remember asking you if you wanted to say something like beforehand and you'd said no. And then on the day you said, do you mind if I do? And I was like, of course I want you to say something. What changed your mind? And uh, I think it was uh, not knowing what to write. I think what changed my mind from it, and it's an odd thing to have happened because I hate the guy. It were Richard, Jess's dad, do you remember Richard, who I used to be in a band with? Yeah. Some Piff do and Winded Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I were in a band called Idiot Box with him at the time. And I think he was telling me about his father passed a need, so I like said some it kind of along them lines, you know, if you don't, you're kind of gonna regret not saying all. So I was worried because I was thinking, what do I write? You know, I, mean, I don't want to write some of it. Anyway, I managed to spill some stuff out and that's left it at that basically. I remember resenting you that day. Yeah, no, you said this. Not for that, kind of for that. It's the fact that I'd built myself up to be kind of like the only speaker and I I've done this eulogy poem, which I've released mm. on another podcast. And then you got up to speak and I was all for you speaking. I wanted you to speak. That isn't why I resented you. It's the facts. But I, I spoke first. Didn't I? I can't remember if you spoke first or I spoke first. I, I can't remember the order of that. What I resented you for, it wasn't your fault. And I realized it wasn't your fault. But at the, the time when you're just in that mindset and that, that frame was everybody came up to you. 
at the end of the funeral and said, what a good job you did. Everyone came up to you and asked how you were. I was kind of pushed back again. And I was like, did, did you not see me in there? Did like quoting my mum, am I invisible? Me and my mum and, and Johnny kind of did most of the funeral planning and sorting everything out and making sure that everything was right. I, th- that was all me. And it's stupid to be jealous about, but I was like, why, why is everyone going up to you? And then there was the gig. Oh, you're going to mention the songs, aren't you? Oh, no, the, the songs of the songs. That was, that was between you and Leslie. That, that was something that I wanted to pass on to you and then you wanted to give to Leslie and then that's absolutely fine. It was the, the charity gig afterwards. All right, yeah. That you organised. And again, it was like all the praise came onto you and I was like, motherfucker, do you know what I mean? I didn't go to it, remember? No, I know you didn't. <laughs> but you you organised it with Leslie, though, didn't you? To start off with. No. Didn't you? No. I started off and then he just had his own ideas. I mean, it was in the TNA with your picture. Oh, yeah, I, I got it in there. You see, the thing with the speaking thing, everyone knows that you do the acting and stuff, so I knew you'd do something and deliver it pretty well. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But you were the front man. You were the guy in every band that people wanted to watch. You and Dad had that in common. You could both draw a crowd and entertain them. And I think that's what people were responding to. Mm. Like I said, it wasn't your fault. And it was me in that time being angry. I I would feel the same. I would feel exactly the same if I were in your shoes, without a shadow of doubt. In fact, I'd I'd feel even more fucking act off. I'd be like, I mean, especially if you... In fact, it was from there onwards that I didn't cry. I didn't cry at dad's funeral and I didn't cry for years afterwards mm. because I just bottled all this, this emotion up. I just never let it out. What about you? We exchange a text or a call on dad's anniversary. I always raise a glass to him. Uh, I think you say you do too. Like I know that with your mum, it's kind of, it's a long time ago and it pops up every now and again. I saw this year on Facebook that you made a post about your mum, which I thought was, was beautiful. Do you get reminiscent of dad? Does does that come back and, and hit you sometimes? You see, yeah, I'll know what day it is. You know, possibly I've, I've, I've a drink as well, but you know me, I drink most days anyway, so I won't know which one's for him and which one in. <laughs> Nothing's different there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not one for watching DVDs and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not even big on looking at photos. I, I don't have any photos of him in the house. I don't have many photos of him full stop, really. That's not the kind of person I am. What does happen to me that I think really hits me, it shows that, you know, there is still something there inside me for me to feel do what I do is, like, well, last night, sometimes I have dreams, and I think dreams are quite a big reminder for me. Mm. And they're really sad when you wake up in the morning as well, because you wake up knowing it was just a dream. Yeah. And I, I think the reasoning for having that dream as well was probably because I knew we were going to be doing this. So yeah, my, my things are more sort of like in my thoughts and stuff rather than physical things and looking at things or going to places as such. That's it. You know, when you come over, you'll go visit graves and things like that. It's a little bit more of a ball egg for me, obviously, with me not driving and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a big collector. And I, some of the stuff I've got, really silly stuff. I've got a pair of my dad's shorts that I still have, even though they've fallen to pieces. Mm-hmm. And some hats, because uh, I remember we both bought bucket hats together. <laughs> hats. I've still got mine. And songs, obviously, you know, you've said about the old music thing. Songs are a bigger thing to me than anything, do you know what I mean? And yeah. Just certain songs and that I might have forgot about. And then they're just, you know, I hear them. I think, bloody hell, that brings back a load of memories. And, you know, not not the obvious ones, you know, not like knocking on them and any dire straits kind of things. Just songs that even I'd forgot about. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of country and western songs out there I find them a, a good reminder but I've never actually sat down and wrote a song for it you know that that's not my scene either do you know what I mean well, I'll write a song about my dad is that not something you'd like to do in the future no not really I think I did write one I pretended it were about him but it won't <laughs> if you could say anything now to your mum or dad something that I don't know you've you've kept secret or just something that you you just want to say to them if you had the opportunity what would that be don't drink so much. Take a look at what's around. Look at me. I'm a kid. No, I've, I've got kids myself now. Still drink, but I'm a little bit more switched on with it. Mm. I pick up a time and a place, you know, I make sure that there's someone else about. Yeah, that, that it really annoys me because it's made me who I am as well. Not so much you. Do you know what I mean? Not so much you. But yeah, it's an awful thing. If you spent less time on that and more time on focusing on other stuff, things might have been different. You know, they might have even been here a lot longer as well. Yeah. 
because you know you can look at numbers all you like you know i'm sick of numbers even with stuff on news numbers don't mean out to me anymore that's all they are numbers how many people have died of COVID? how many people have lost 24 hours you know how many people have died in the last 28 days i don't know i just get sick of numbers but yeah we're all very much like as parents whether we like it or not aren't we yeah we take the best and the worst of them sometimes yeah and it is it's a good thing to recognize those things as well i suppose I see traits of both in yourself. And it's weird because, like I say, you mum and my dad, they were kind of different people as well. But obviously they had a lot of similarities because some I've got my notes here with, with Valentine's Day coming up. I remember finding all Valentine's Day cards from my dad to your mum and stuff. And he used to always call himself Mr. Magic. <laughs> yeah, he did. Forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Something I never really got to ask. Do you know what I mean? Do, do, do you recall it? I, rem- I remember him writing it now, now that you said that, yeah. <laughs> and do you know, for years and years, I thought, God, maybe he's the secret magician that I don't know about. <laughs> you know, when he had his guitar, when he had his Fender Stratocaster under bed, mm. I used to wait till I went out and I pull it out and have a quick look at it and show my yes. friends. Because if you caught me looking at it, God, it'd go ballistic. Yeah, I do the same. And I show my friends and say, that's Buddy Holly's guitar. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I love that. Maybe he told me it was. I don't know. Yeah, he probably would have done. But he had some great stuff in there as well. Uh, my dad decided that I needed to collect beer mats. That's my new hobby. <laughs> it's his job to go in the pub and get them for me <laughs> while I sit in the car <laughs> with a pop and some crisps and War of the Worlds playing on. You don't want to hear that War of the Worlds shit when you're a young lad. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Can you see if my dad's in there? <laughs> Which one's your dad? Mm. <laughs> <You'll play him. laughs> Bobby Betcher, everyone knows who he is. Is there anything that you've, I mean, you kind of just already answered this. Is there anything that you've learned from our dad, maybe your mum, that you are now using with Miles and Daisy or something that you've learned not to do with Miles and Daisy? Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, definitely learned what not to do, really. If I might say, I often think like you do, how would both feel now, you know, with things how they are? You know, part of me thinks my dad would be a non mask wearing person that wouldn't give a shit about it all. But we don't know, do we? He, he might have thought very differently. But yeah, more what not to do. Do you know what I mean? I give up as much time as I can because, like I say, years down the line, those are the things you remember, aren't they? You're like, yeah. your childhood. And, you know, as, as much as it might sound like a shitty shit childhood, I didn't as well. I were very much like, my own company and I still do now and if I'm like that and that's something I enjoy then it's not a problem and if I do see company you know I know there's people there as well and, and that's how people should be I think yeah no I, I totally agree need time on your own I need time with other people that's it. if you can't be happy within yourself you're never going to be happy around other people you've got to find your own happiness first I say that to a lot of people I know time's pressing on and you've got to pick up Daisy. I think my my last question is, uh, I'm just going to throw it open to you. You've listened to every podcast that I've released. You've been there through it all with me, through thick and thin. And we've had a conversation before where you said, there's things I've got wrong or I might have remembered differently. So I'm going to ask, like, what is that? And... Is there anything else that, I know you've made notes, is there anything else that you wanted to to say on this podcast? Like, this is your platform. Is there anything that you want to just get out and off your chest? No, like you said, I, I have listened to every podcast. I've genuinely enjoyed them as well. I can't say I've got a particular favourite one, probably this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a good thing. If anyone were going to do it, it were going to be you. Do you know what I mean? This isn't the thing I I do, a, a podcast deal, dealing with this stuff. And you are, you, you want to know things you, you're interested. You know, I, I can tell myself from what we spoke about today and you know, things you didn't know, you, you are genuinely so I, surprised to hear things. And you've got that thirst for knowledge to find stuff out off other people. And I'm like that to a certain extent, but not so much as you. But that's not saying either one of us is right or wrong. I just think we've both got different approaches. And, and that's a good thing. You know, not everyone has to be the same anyway. I don't know, I just suppose take each day as it comes. You know, you never know what's around the corner, do you? No, you never do. Well, I do, it's a shock. <laughs> <laughs> it, again, just piggybacking off something that you said earlier, people will always remember how you made them feel. Mm. They won't necessarily remember what you bought them or what you gave them. So, yeah, just going forward, be a nice person, be a, a good person and learn from past mistakes i think this is why i've done this podcast is so i can learn from my dad's mistakes i can learn from my mum's mistakes and hopefully not repeat them going forward you've said to me many a time that anybody past the age of 30 who hasn't had a kid is weird yeah i still stick by that 
here I am at 36, Weird. <laughs> still don't have a kid, which is, you know, a, another bone of contentment I, I had was like, my dad loved Miles. He loved Joe. He would have doted on Daisy. And I never had the chance to give my mum or my dad any of that. And you did. I want to sweat the small stuff. <laughs> he had a lot of grandkids, I'm sure. He, 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 did. No, he definitely did. Guys, if you want to keep up with Russell, if you want to thank him, if you want to talk to him about anything that we've spoken about on this podcast, you can find him on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash dad, where you can find many, many videos of Russell and my gorgeous niece, Daisy, playing the ukulele, just being silly and bringing joy and fun and entertainment to everyone. They are local celebrities down in Clackheaton, where they live. They've been all over the news in various newspapers and magazines across the country. They're also branching out onto TikTok, where you can find him at Rusty Pops. Yeah, why Rusty Pops? I don't know. I don't even know where it came from. Did you think of it? No. <laughs> You you started calling yourself Rusty Fox and then you draw that little caricature that you always used to draw. Uh, I, I haven't drawn that for years, you know. <laughs> and you? <yeah. laughs> I used to no. love that. <laughs> yeah, many names. <laughs> many names. He has also set up a brilliant page on Facebook. Like you said, you, you don't want to get into the, the grief and the mourning side of stuff, but you do want to actively learn and seek out knowledge from other people. This Facebook page is called What Dads Want, and it's giving voices to dads, essentially, because not trying to be generalistic or anything like, but a lot of the voices do come from mums and, and women. So I think this is a nice place for dads just to go and get things off their chest and things like that. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a project I've always, always wanted to do, but never bit the bullet and done it. Sick of all these mum sites. And fair enough, you can go on, but you still get kicked off <laughs> if you're not a mum. <laughs> so I just I, I need some of here. Because it's something I would have liked. So I just went out there, did it. Wasn't bothered about how many people joined. I just wanted to get it out there. Uh, so I invited a few people. And then I thought, right, I've got to keep this interesting. So I try and at least once a day put some on just a topic of discussion that people can discuss. And I'm quite lucky that people are getting involved and, you know, I didn't really expect it. I thought dad's being dad's, yeah, they might just take a look and that's it. But they're really putting themselves out there and, and laying themselves down online and talking about their experiences and really start, like getting to the nitty gritty, which is what I wanted as well. A bit like this show. But also it's light hearted as well. You know, who do your kids look like the most? You did one recently about did dads actually know the weight of the baby? Yeah, yeah. This is something I have no interest in. <laughs> I have no interest whatsoever what I wear as a child. I have no interest in my own kids what the wear as a child. I can pick her up and say, yeah, she's bloody ever. <laughs> I don't care about specifics. So there's a lot of that going on. It's, it's great. Take a look. Comes back to numbers, doesn't it? You just don't like numbers. Yeah, I don't numbers. <laughs> Do you reckon if our dad had been alive, he'd join this group? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> I don't think he'd join any group. I don't think he'd know how to. I don't, I don't think he'd listen to this podcast. <laughs> so, Russell, thank you so much for being a guest. Oh, yes, quickly. The, the, one of the questions I did want to ask before we go, your name's Joseph Russell, Petcher. Yeah. Our family have a tendency of the boy being called Joe, because my granddad was Joe, our dad was Joe, your Joe, then there's Barry's son, who is Joe. And then it's first name, middle name. And yet we always call each other by the middle name. Yeah. Like, what do you go by now? Do you go by Joseph? Do you go by Russell? Do you go by Rusty? <laughs> do <you> know? <laughs> I don't really know myself. Many names. The common Josephine at work. Yeah, I, I really don't know who I am. We'll sort that. We'll... <laughs> We'll have more conversations and find out who you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at some lyrics I wrote the day. Is it? What it is or who I am or what I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Something like that. Excellent. Well, yes, please do drop Joe, Josephine, Russell, Rusty. Rusty Pops. You, Dad. You, Dad. Just drop him a message. Say thank you. School first. Subscribe to his TikTok if you're on TikTok. Join his Facebook groups. Honestly, they are so cute. Daisy steals the show every time. Sorry, Russell. She does. <laughs> There's a new Petcher taking the spotlight now. And... Thank you for, for being on. Thank you. Wow. I did not expect that at all. My mind's blown. That has got to be one of the best conversations 
I think I've ever had with our Russ. He was so open, so honest. He didn't hold anything back and he was articulate and it was just amazing. There's so much stuff there that I, I didn't know. And yes, I knew he was young when his mum died. Yes, I knew I was young when I moved in. But putting the dates together and the fact that he met my mum before I was born and he had to lie to his mum is just, it's surreal to me. Russell, thank you so, so much for being you. And I think there are several people listening to this podcast who deal with death, grief and mourning the same way that you do. And I think it's so eye-opening and enlightening just to say it's okay. It's okay not to have these rituals. It's okay not to think about it. So thank you. The week that this podcast is released is my mum and dad's birthday week. So my dad was born on the 20th of February and my mum was born on the 24th. So this episode is dedicated to you. I love you and I miss you every day. But with that, that's kind of the end of my journey and my understanding and my learning well, it's never the end of my learning, but it's kind of the end of this section of the podcast. I've told you what I've gone through with my grandma and granddads on both sides, my best friend, Clint, my mum, my dad, how my fiance helped me through, how my best friend helped me through and learning about my brother, learning things that I never knew about him and, and his side and how it affects me. Now, I have no doubt that I will continue to learn. I, I've got more to learn from aunties and uncles and cousins. And if any of them want to come on the podcast, you know where to reach me. I'm more than happy to have you on. But for the future of this podcast now, it's, it's in the hands of the guests. It's in the hands of you. So if you want to be a guest on The Morning Brew, please get in touch with me. I'm at themorningbrew at gmail.com. Just send me an email explain why you'd like to come on and I will do my best to organise something. And let's chat about your experiences and how what you've gone through has moulded you into and how you can help others. And I do hope to bring on professionals, therapists, psychologists, funeral planners, just anything I can do just to make this whole process just a little bit easier for anybody who's listening. And if you have been listening since episode one, Thank you so, so much for sticking with me. It's been a journey, right? And these podcasts are getting longer. In fact, Russell did say before we started recording, he used to love listening to these podcasts when they were shorter. And I get that because you can just have it on. It's only half an hour. But the more I delve deeper into other people's journeys and what they're going through, the, the conversation just flows. And before you know it, an hour has passed. So please bear with me for the longer episodes. And again, if you want to pause midway through and come back later, that is absolutely fine. Guys, if you're liking what I'm doing, please give me a rating on Apple Podcasts, drop me a review and let other people know. Anybody who you think is going through something and needs to hear this, just spread the word. I really do appreciate that. Also, drop me a like, a follow, a retweet on all the social medias. I am at The Morning Brew on Twitter and Instagram and facebook.com forward slash The Morning Brew on Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn. Don't really know what I'm doing on LinkedIn. I'm making it up as I go along, but there I am. Also, for the Apple listeners, although if you're listening to this in the future and you're on Android, I'm sure it will have dropped for Android then, but I'm also on clubhouse and i aim to do some live chats with people so get the clubhouse app and i'm sure to meet you there anyway guys this has been another long one thank you so so much and that's it for episode 10 of the morning brew putting you back in the center of your morning